Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Shadowrun Hong Kong, where we are investigating a serial killer. I have a feeling, Isabel, you're about to learn that Yatunde is dead. Ying shakes her head sadly. She reaches out a hand toward Isabel, who shrinks away from it. She's dead. So are Gan and Nakamura, and Tong was killed just tonight. So much blood, you have to stop this from continuing. Isabel's expression remains impassive, but her knuckles grow white as her hands fall up into fist. That's... That's why we're what we're here for. We'll stop the killings. That's another reason to have brought her. I forgot she's from here. Thank you, Isabel. Ying lifts a hand, wiping tears away from her eyes. What can you tell me about the murders? They started two weeks ago. The first to go was Gan. We found him in his apartment, eviscerated. Ying swallows, grimacing at a painful memory. He'd been torn apart. His head had been ripped well, completely off. He'd been torn uh, completely off, and most of his skin flailed away. There was so much blood, it took us a week to clean out his apartment. That's nasty. Yeah, Tang nods, running his palm over his forehead. The rest have been the same. Always at night, always dismembered. Each scene is like a nightmare, and every time nobody has seen anything, it's like a ghost. Ooh. What happened to Tong? The same thing that happened to the rest of the victims. Evisceration and dismemberment. He sent a guard to keep people out of his... We sent a guard to keep people out of his shop, but he'll let you in. When did he die? Sometime early tonight. He locked up his shop, put, but Ip stopped by to ask him about some skill chips he had. The door was unlocked, and inside, Ying lifts her hands helplessly. She opens her mouth, but no words come out. Seeing Ing's inability to continue, Ip takes over. Inside looked like a bad horror scene. Just like all the other murders, it had to have happened after sundown because I saw this shop was open when I was on my way to get some noodles for dinner. The shop was open. Okay, why didn't you call the police? The Hong Kong police force isn't welcome here. They've tried to force us out several times before or come hunting, hunting for someone to pin a crime on. We do a lot of favors for local gangs and triads, handle their matrix security, fix up their gear, and make sure they have access to the Hong Kong Shadowlands hub. We're too valuable a resource for them to lose, so they protect us when the HKPF or anyone else decides we're an easy target. They handle our physical security, and we make sure to send the message via the matrix. Last time the HKPF made trouble, we started the air airing the assistant chief's dirty laundry over the trid. They got the picture and backed off. This is kind of what happens when the police are like any other or a faction and aren't neutral like they should be. When you start getting the when the police start radicalizing, you're just going to get you're just you just fall back to feudalism and old times. Have you made any enemies lately? Not that I can think of. We keep to ourselves. We buy and sell technology. We're not mercenaries or criminals. We're merchants and deckers. And even if someone was cheap, you are criminals, technically, but you're not robbers or bandits, is what you're saying. Um, even if someone was cheated in a deal, this kind of response is unthinkable. Whatever did this, it wasn't human. It's violence and savagery. It's a monster, whatever it is. Plenty of men better humans are monsters, too. Even just because it's horrible doesn't mean it's supernatural. What do the one poor and elders do? Isabel snorts derisively. They make the rules. Kick people out who don't obey them. They're a bunch of petty tyrants, that's what. You're being unfair, Isabel. Our laws are for the good of the community. Tang turns to address you. We keep the Wampoa and its residents safe. We review trade agreements with outsiders to see if they're good for the community. We provide a guiding vision, like a town council. I can respect that. That is not weird. That's normal. I'm glad you understand. This community is fragile, and the authorities bear us a lot of ill will. A single misstep could spell our end. See, it is cyberpunk, because you have the overwhelming corpse and all of that. But it's also fantasy. The Any sort of punk thing, and uh, if you have fantasy with an overwhelming evil empire type thing, you're getting a little bit of punk. This is more heavily on the punk people would perceive because it's all the cyber, but it's very much, and also, in a fantasy, if you take to to remove the punk, 
the small villages that are at risk would be much more innocent and less engaged in outright breaking the law and such like that. Uh, they'd be like the independent village trying to prevent itself from being taken over by the nearby barony or something like that. But they're very parallel genres. Anyway. I am the invoker of sprites. I commune with the spirits and machines, ask them for blessings, and pass those blessings on to the people here. I heal the sick and ensure the feng shui of our, inhabit of our habitats is as good as it can be, given our confines. She's a shaman, that's all. She's just got some kooky spin on it. Claims her tone is some kind of all-encompassing machine gun god that lives in circuitry. Isabel pats her... Oh, I did the wrong voice. I did Gobbit's voice for you. She's a shaman, that's all. She's just got some kooky spin on it. Claims her totem is some kind of all-encompassing machine god that lives in circuitry. Isabel pats her deck, looking at Amy. Ancient gods and ancestors are one thing. My deck, it's mine. I built it. The only spirits it's got in it are the ESPs I loaded up with. Ah, uh, the Shadowrun games are set pre-Technomancy, but this might be a shadow, of, uh, a, a nod to that. Just because you cannot see or touch a thing does not mean that it does not exist. Just because you do not believe in it does not mean it does not protect you from afar. It gives Isabel a look of deep sadness. She might be a technomancer. Which is weird. They would I do not think they the first technomancers happened this early in the setting. I can't touch programs either, but at least I can prove they have an effect on the physical world. Your superstitions are just that. Bullshit. Isabel glances at you, jerking a thumb toward Tang. This guy treats drones like they're living things. What exactly do you do, Tang? Tang extends his arms, palms up. As you watch, the tattoos therein shift into a complex mathematical formula. I am the first and glorious servo. servo. I study patterns, repair machinery, and teach others how to attune themselves to the wonders of automation. The Blessed Autofab is my shop and purview, where we make the drones we use and sell. They are a little bit pompous, but that's within the what's within the Wuja genre, anyway. As for me, I serve as the resplendent voltage spike. Ip smiles crookedly. That means I shoot people who try to screw with us. It's a fancy title for head of security. I like you! You! I are... Yeah, you're good. That's all for me. It might be wise to ask the residents of Wampoa Garden if they've seen or heard anything after you've gone to the Tong's sensory carnival. They may have seen or heard things we have not. Good to know. After, you said. So. Do that first. And I chose one of the... I chose very much one of the missions that's going to be less combat-y. Order Lamb at your service. The elders told me that you'd be coming. They tell you about what happened to Tong? Just the basics. Just the basics. Well, nothing's basic about this. I've seen people shot, stabbed, beaten to death. Hell, I've even seen a corpse that was so dry and desiccated I could have sworn a vampire got to it. None of that's got anything on this. Brace yourself and go on in. There have been really horribly gruesome scenes that made me cringe in the earlier games with the, 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 the art that they have. I'm thinking back to the bug hive in the first game and the asylum in the first game. The, the people that had been transferred into pleasure dolls. Bleh. And oh, the the cult place, the cult place in Dragonfall. That was not good. That one got me riled up pretty bad. Okay. Tong Sensory Carnival looks like a scene out of a B-grade slasher sim. The cloying scent of incense hangs thick and pungent in the air emanating from the small shrine in the corner of the shop. Unfortunately, it does nothing to cover up the reek of death and clotted blood. Despite the ragged rem remnants of Elder Tong littering the floor, the rest of the shop appears to be in good order. The 
least at first glance. Nothing is broken, tipped over, or otherwise ransacked. As you're about to step further in the room, you glance at the ceiling and walls. The blood from Tong's body isn't just confined to where his remains lie. Di dr drying blood is spread about the walls and ceiling as well. Oh, joy. This is going to be a detective one. Tong's body is a ruined mess. The destroyed ruin of his face is barely recognizable. What is left of his body would be dis best described as savaged. All of his limbs have been torn off, and a pile of flayed skin lies next to the remnants of the Rapoan Elder. And... Ew. Yeah. Worst. Oh, right. I just flashed to the... As technology mission with the blood magic in Dragonfall. Oh. Thank you for making me think of all the terrible things that were in previous games that... To be honest, I love that about this this these games that can make me go ha ah, at the same time as making me feel like a hero and getting me screwed up and working for horrible, horrible people at the end of them without realizing I'm doing it. The Wampoan's clothing has all but been reduced to rags and tissue by cuts and tears, apparently sustained during the flame. At this point, the only thing holding what's left of his body is into a semblance of human form is the hair thin fiber optics of his cyberware. Gobbit puts a hand over mouth, speaking in an uncharacteristically serious tone. Sweet heaven, Noel, I haven't seen anything like that since Auntie Wong tried to stash some cred sticks in a devil's rat, devil rat's nest. It takes a lot to turn my stomach, but we sure have a winner today. This is seriously messed up. Oh, look at all the things I can't do. I'll second that. This isn't a murder. This is more like, I don't know, a feeding frenzy? If it weren't for that skin, I'd say Tong stepped on a go goddamn mine or anything, or something. Look at all the things I can't do. I probably... I want to check something real quick. My biotech is too short. Okay, have Gobbita sense the body. You're the boss. Boss. Man, this is going to be unpleasant. Gobbit closes her eyes, taking a deep breath. After a moment, she opens them again and makes a strange grunting noise. There's no fear here, Noel. No anger either. This just, just this kind of satisfied feeling. Tong never saw it coming, and whoever did it was professional about it, which is pretty odd, because nobody's professional about eviscerating a body, as far as I know. You think it was a hit? I don't know why the killer was after Tong, but it definitely wasn't any kind of mindless creature or even someone who was even someone particularly passionate. It was somebody who planned this and executed it and was glad about it. I don't know, it kind of feels like it was just business as usual. Okay, well, can't do the biotech. Might want to upgrade that because there's going to be some other dialogue options that that comes up on. The walls are covered in splattered and smeared blood, most of which has hardened into a crusty congealed paste, though my intelligence is only two, so that's limiting it. Thick tracks of it run laterally. It looks like the blood has been deliberately smeared. Hey, Noel, I don't know a whole lot about science or all that, but I know what blood looks like when it hits a wall. This isn't natural. Somebody deliberately smeared blood all over these walls. See how it looks like it's got paint trails? That's because somebody used Tong's hearts like brush. So they painted his walls with blood. Why? Do I look like a psychologist to you? Maybe because they're a freak? Maybe they're one of those sick serial killers that sees like sees their murders as art? I got no clue. All I know is that is what normal blood looks like on a wall, and this ain't it. Some people have a bad grasp of art. I knew this guy in Kwantung who used to make music out of stray radio static and panic button calls. Called it Crisis Wave. It was awful. Odd aside, but I'm guilty of those myself. Desk safe. Tong's desk drawers are open and the safe that's built into one side has been opened. There's no sign of tampering and the green light next to the word unlock is blinking. Whatever, whoever opened the safe did it with a key fob. Inside are several blank cred sticks, but no sign of any with money on them. Looks like someone looted his stash. A guy like this wouldn't keep only empty cred sticks in the safe. Oh, they wouldn't. 
Search bathroom. Thank you. Tong's bathroom is immaculate and the drains are tiny. Whatever killed him didn't exit through here. I don't have... Okay. This is Yamaha 95000 V Simpson, the device for mixing and mastering Simpson's chips. Several drive bays are empty and all the chip jacks are empty. The screen is flashing a repeated error message. Warning, requested files cannot be found. Please return drives to bay and try again. Yeah, try that. Isabel rattles out some commands on the Simpsons keyboard, stepping away after a few seconds with a look of satisfaction on her face. There, I put the drive want warning on spin. It's in the diagnostic mode only, though. Maybe we'll learn something, maybe not. Okay, Yamaha's diagnostics check. Memory okay, drive error, assist bus okay. Beginning core dump, please wait. Isabel studies the screen and details letters and numbers stroll by. Looks like Tong was cooking some BTLs here. We got one of those in our pocket, too. He's hacked the peak controller output cutoffs. The delta levels on SIM chips are usually about 4 to 5. 6.5 for Cal Hots. Hack the peak controller outputs cutoffs. The delta level sims are on delta levels on sim chips, four to five, six point five for Cal Hots. His delta peaks are pushing twelve. That's brain burning territory, Noel. And all the drives and chips those BTLs were stored on are missing. I never liked Tong. I never liked Tong. God, stop giving me so much em e e emotion. Thank you. I never liked Tong, but it wasn't because he was a bad guy. I just didn't like any of the elders. But if he was cooking chips at Delta 12, maybe he burned somebody he shouldn't have. Maybe they flipped their lid and came after him. Or a relative did. Isabel gives you a serious look, tipping her head at the scent. This, the metahuman brain can't handle this kind of output. It'll shut down after a few of these. That is a lot of stuff. And now I'm thinking of the BTL place in the first game with the BTL zombies that we had to put down. Ooh, you will talk to us now. This orc is busily snacking on a steamed bun. As you approach, he wipes off one of his hands and sticks it outward to you, out toward you. Hey, stranger, nice to see you. Zippy toe tag at your service. How are you liking one poa garden? I'm Noel. Nice to meet you, Zippy. Nice to meet you, too. Listen, I know it's a little forward of me to just say hello and whatnot, but I'm interested in giving you a hand if I can. Zippy gestures expansively at the squalid, neon-lit streets of the Wampolo Garden. This is my home, at least for the time being. I'd like, like to stop these killings. We've never met before, but I know exactly who you are. You're my replacement. The elders had me autopsy what was left of Elder Gan and Elder Nakamura after they got ripped apart, but I didn't want to dig any deeper. So, since I don't know you and I can smell a Shadowrunner a mile away, you've got to be the outsider they called in to stop the killings, right? Tilts his head back, obviously pleased at his amateur deduction. Nothing gets by you, does it? See, I have good eyes. A lot of good eyes, actually. If you're in the market for replacements, only slightly used. And they only come from certified donors, I swear. Hearty belly laugh erupts from the orc, and he slaps one of his thighs in elation. Man, I kill myself. <sighs> Pretty funny. Are you a stand-up comedian? With jokes like that, are you kidding me? I'm one of the only trained surgeons around here. I keep the other one poems healthy. Gotta practice down the road. Blind Chin's a pretty good cyber doc, but he's basically an implant specialist, and that's it. How'd you end up here? I did my residency back in the UCAS. Could have become a real MD, too. If things hadn't gone south for unrelated reasons. Zippy opens his coat, revealing a cyber deck. He pats it proudly. I also deck a little. But I'm better at slicing skin than ice. I see. Wampoa Garden seemed a good fit for me. So is it fairly peaceful around here? For the most part... Other than these killings, we don't have much way, by way of problems. We do information security for the triads, and that makes us fairly impervious to anyone who wants to start trouble. 
And when we start something, we hit them in the matrix with our while our triad friends hit them in meat space. Some small time gangs have tried pushing in here before, but they backed off when they figured out they weren't just picking a fight with Tang and his guys, but with the red dragon and the yellow lotus. They got the message real quick, what was left of them anyway. You must have a lot of customers. That's the chip truth. I have to change my cover cost to charge my cover cost and eat. But damn near free service. There's always a waiting list. What's good? Honest work. I like helping my neighbors in the community. We all look out for each other. If somebody messes with one of us, they mess with all of us. That kind of community is as rare as gold these days. How many places have an ethos like us? Not the damn cores, that's for sure. Yeah, there's very little differentiating. Some of the gangs in Shadowrun will actually be better than dealing with some of the cores. Some of the cores will be fairly decent. Correction, some of the people in the core will be decent. The core as a whole is a monstrosity of inhuman machinations. But that's what happens whenever you get a large corporate, a large organization. I've lived a lot of places, done my fair share of shadow running, but this place is special. It's been a long time since I really felt like anywhere was a real home. Sippy looks off past you toward the Wampoa Garden streets. His expression grows wistful, like he's remembering something from a long time ago. I'm sure I'll move again, but not for a while. I'm not done with this city or these people. Let me ask you about Wampoa Garden. Sure thing, what do you want to know? What are your thoughts on the murders? There's a sharp intake of breath as Zippy shakes his head. Pretty gruesome business. Gan died from a broken no neck. Looked like someone had wrenched it around. His arms and legs were cut off. Some skin flailed away, too. Nakamura had his throat ripped out by someone with pretty sharp teeth. At first I thought it was a devil rat, but the teeth marks were all from something with humanoid jaw. I didn't look at Yatun, Dave. From what I saw at a distance, it was the same story. Didn't seem much tough point since I'd seen it twice already. As for Tong, from what Porter told me, it was Gan and Nakamura over again. Take a look at him yet. Yes, it's the same as you described for the others. Damn, I like Tong. The BTL business is unsavory, but the man had to eat. His regular sims were great. Generally all-around nice guy, friendly with everyone. Never had anyone mad at him. There ain't no justice, let me tell you. I probably gave you too much information, and I'm probably going to regret it later. What can I tell you about the elders? What can you tell me about the elders? <laughs> well, they're an eclectic bunch, that's for sure. Where to start? Ning's the spiritual leader here. She's the voice of the Wampoans, I guess. A lot of close friends are really more... Her close friends are really more a follower, since she's something of a priest for the machine spirits. Maybe it's a cultural thing for people who grew up here, but it's never called to me. She still, still, she makes a damn fine pot of tea. And on to a new video. See you in a moment. We're still investigating these murders.